Mr. DeForest Kelly, one of our fine, fine actors and a very integral part of one of my favorite shows, Star Trek. DeForest, welcome to Open Mind. Well, thank you, Bill. I heard you talking tonight about the UFOs, and I listened to you for so many nights, and I thought, well, it's about time that I'm calling Bill Jenkins and telling him something about uh, an experience that I had some time ago. Uh, an experience that uh, I don't often tell. I didn't tell for many years, and then when I became a part of Star Trek, I just sawed it off completely. Mm -hmm. But uh, having heard and read about the San Francisco incident the other day, I thought, well, it's about time that I called Bill Jenkins and just let everybody on the radio hear it, too. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. But I want to tell you how much I enjoy your show. That's the main reason that I called. And uh, it's always an entertaining show and one that is certainly enlightening in many areas. Well, if you've, if I've entertained you just one one hundredth as much as you've entertained me, then I've done a grand job. Well, thank you, and I hope you're going to uh, enjoy the one we just wrapped up. I think Did you? You're going to love it. As a matter of fact, we uh, wound the show up in San Francisco. We uh, The show wrapped in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait. You're going to love it, I'm sure. Mr. I wanted to tell you, when you were talking about the year 1950, now this is really going back some time, uh, my wife and I and a friend of ours, who at that time was a uh, <coughs> businessman and executive for, with the Time Seaboard Finance Company, we were driving to New York, and uh, we were in the... Uh, Swamplands of Louisiana, and it was late in the afternoon, possibly around 4.30. This was in the latter part of June, 1950. And we had been switching off driving, and I was in the back seat at the time. And it was um, just uh, at twilight time. And about 600 feet above us, the old story, a long cigar-shaped object whipped past us in front of us um, and had an identification light, a red identification light on the end of it that was flickering and laid down a jet stream. This was in 1950. And I couldn't believe what I saw. I thought, well, you know, it's crazy. And uh, we uh, my wife and you know, my friend saw it too, but I was in the position in the back seat, and I really had a good look at this thing. And off the sides of it were whipping like um, blue flames kind of rolling off of the side of it. But as it went into the distance at a very rapid rate, it was, you know, I had to look real quick, but I saw this red light flicking off and on on the tail end of this thing. So we drove into Montgomery, Alabama. I said, my God, nobody's ever going to believe this. And when we got into Montgomery, Alabama, outside of a restaurant, went in to eat, there was a headline in the paper that said, Mysterious Object Sighted Over, uh, over Southland. I've regretted to this day that I didn't buy that paper and keep it. But I just wondered if uh, anyone on your show over the years, uh, during that period of time, that time frame had had any reportings that you can recall or remember? Well, we've had obviously we've talked about many of them, um, but I don't uh, in my mind I can't put one down to that uh, that time frame. But let's throw it out on the table and see if anyone remembers that. And All right. even more so, maybe someone has a copy of that paper. There are a lot of UFO buffs, if we can put it that way. Uh, that are in Southern California. Yeah, well, that's an interesting thought. I really do appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. I bet you that there are a lot of people... Have you got some time just to stay on the line and, and spend some time with us here? Sure, I'll be back. And uh, say hello to George Green, who is uh, deeply involved. There's not the George Green, who is our manager here, but... Uh, and our leader. <laughs> yes. <laughs> our, our captain. Our own Captain yes. Kirk. Uh, this is uh, George Green, who is uh, deeply and extensively involved in uh, UFO research in a very serious manner. Mm. Say hello to DeForest Kelly there, George. Uh, DeForest, i got a question. You uh, said that there was some kind of 
uh, vapor or something coming off the craft? Uh, no, there were, it was like a um, blue flames, like were whipping off of the side of it. It, uh, it appeared to be. Um, like uh, it, you mean like at a high speed and right. an increased right. temperature? Yeah, it laid down a uh, like a vapor stream. When we after it passed, there was just a like a, a low vapor stream. How, how uh, what was the elevation of the craft? The elevation of it, apparently, it looked to me like it was around seven, six or seven hundred feet, very low. And the speed, did you estimate that? Oh, God, I just, it just whipped by, but uh, I, I... You mean from uh, from the back of the, of the car to the front of the car, is that what you're talking about? or left no, see, it, it passed in front of the car. It was, it was, we were going down the highway, and it was like, uh, oh, probably three or four hundred yards in front and it just crossed, you know, in, in front of the car. Warp through. A yeah. Warp three, Mr. Sulo. Yes, warp four. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have with us uh, Jason Rand, who has uh, had an experience himself at about that time period. Hi, Bones. Yes, hi. I hi. Uh, Again, excuse me, my voice is really bad. Listen, I don't want to hear about your voice. <laughs> Listen, you're great. You guys have done more to enlighten and enrich the not only the imagination of the world, but I think maybe that what your crew has done is probably very honorable for those of us who really take this thing seriously. And um, I understand that Bill Shatner had a very important experience. Did you ever hear about that from Bill? I, I know that he has. I have never heard him uh, relate it. Uh, but uh, I've been told that Bill has, and for some odd reason, I've never discussed it with him. I think you, I think you might want to talk to him. Uh, from what I understand... Maybe he's like me. He's afraid for many years I didn't tell him. You guys have been busy fighting Klingons. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Can I ask you... have been taken care of now. We're moving on to other things. Uh -oh. There you go. Can I ask you a couple questions about, sure. about your experience? Um, immediately prior to that, could you, or would you remember whether or not you might have had any kind of telepathic contact uh, a week, a month, a year before bringing you to that particular point. I'm doing research on, on my new book and I have found a very strong connection between what we call precognitive awareness of things that are heard and seen within the mind and then usually within a month to six months or maybe a year that person who either has what we call dream state um, implant reality suddenly, in fact, sees a manifestation of, of the things that we call UFOs or, or extraterrestrial vehicles. That was another movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you remember having any kind of conscious awareness or dream state awareness before, during, or after that experience? No, no, I really don't. I was, it was a point in my career where I was um, moving on to New York, and I, I had, I, it's a long time ago, it was just... Um, an incident that happened, and it was so long ago that I all I, I will never forget that that uh, that sighting uh, or or uh, seeing. I did. I was making a, a personal appearance in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, or in in the seventies when I first related this story. And uh, at the end of the session, I was signing autographs, and a gentleman came by with a young boy, his son. And uh, he told me that he was with some some somebody with the government and with UFO sightings, and that the sighting that I had uh, related to that audience was uh, had been uh, identified, or, or they had made note of it that it was found on the books. So evidently, I was not the only one that was aware of it. That cigar-shaped craft has been reported um, yes, as so much as the times. flying saucer, actually. So many times, yes. But uh, that's exactly what it was. It was a, a really the old, old uh, thing you've heard many, many times, a cigar-shaped craft. And um, I was... Uh, I feel privileged to have seen it, but at the same time, it's one of those things that you're, you're, you're rather reluctant to, to talk about, particularly when you're on a show like Star Trek. Well, Bones is out of the closet now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I somehow now I know how it feels to come out of the closet. Yeah, you just told about a million folks. You feel good about that? <laughs> 
Uh, but right. I had to call and tell you that because I listen to you so often, it seems like, on Saturday night. And you have discussed you have those many. And I thought, gee, I should go in there. You should. And you give should. him a call and tell him about that thing. Well, I'm just delighted you did. I off of it each time. And then I, my wife, Carolyn, said, why don't you go call him and tell him and get it off your mind. There it is. Do it. <laughs> Now I want you to stay with us, okay? <laughs> I'll hang on for a little while. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm honored to have you aboard. DeForest Kelly, that's Dr. McCoy, Bones of the Star Trek uh, series, and the new movie will be coming. When is that coming out, DeForest? Uh, we're hoping for either a Thanksgiving uh, release, if not, it'll probably be December 6th. But the Enterprise, you crashed it in the last one. I know, but we're... I, we're, we're I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen about it. <laughs> <you. laughs> I thought we could get something out of it. <laughs> but this is going to be a big one because, you know, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. I've seen every one of them. September the 8th will be 20 years since Star Trek first appeared. My goodness, has it been that long? That's right. It seems to me like it's been around forever. <laughs> so it has. <laughs> so have we. <laughs> and I never get tired of it. We'll be right back in a moment. I'm Bill Jenkins.